And the last one I'm doing... Okay, question nine. And the last one I'm doing in this paper, in fact the last one I'm doing for a while, I don't know if I'm going to get down to the um, specimen paper. Right, the sand perch is a fish that lives on the seafloor. Each female defends a territory in which it feeds and reproduces. Dependent on the population density of the species, a single male may defend a group of up to 10 neighbouring females. A sand perch, all sand perch, sorry, begin life as hermaphrodites and mature into females. What is meant by the term hermaphroditic? Or hermaphrodite, sorry. Um, so what we're looking for there, straight definition, so it's a species or an organism uh, with both male and female. Oh, female reproductive systems. Okay, there is a strict size-based dominance hierarchy in the social groups. The mean size of males is greater than that of females. State the term used to describe this difference in mean size. So we have males greater size than females. That's the normal way round for this particular setup. So we've got sexual dimorphism. If it was the females were larger, then we'd be looking at reversed sexual dimorphism. Okay. If the male dies, the largest female will undergo a period of growth and will then change sex. State one other cause of sex change in organisms. So I'm afraid you just need to know this one. Okay, so so they've given you that there is none of that particular sex now present. Um, what we're also potentially looking for is competition. And the other one is parasites. So a form of parasitic infection might cause that to, to go. Okay. Um, for next bit, sorry, this goes a little bit back and forward. So we're going D and then across to here and then back to there. Right. Okay. A study was conducted to measure the growth of female fish undergoing sex change. Social groups were created in a laboratory by placing groups of similarly sized fish in tanks with identical environmental conditions. Two treatments were set up, each with 10 groups. Treatment one, with two females and one male in each group. Treatment two, has four females and one male in each group. On day five, the male was removed from half of each of the treatment groups to create experimental groups. On day 35, the sex and growth of each fish was determined. The structure of the groups is shown in the table. So it's pretty, it's exactly what they've just said on the on the kind of blurby bit, okay? So in treatment one, he had started with 10 groups and all of them were two, two females, one male. And then on day five, half of them had the male removed, so it goes to two females. And then they're basically saying on day 35, they checked and you now had one female, one male. And in the control group, it never changed. It was, remained two females, one male. Okay, treatment two, we had uh, it started off with 10 groups again. You have your experimental group after five days taking out one of the male, the only male that was there, sorry, not one of, giving you four females. And then when you check them at day 35, we now have three females and one male. And if we look at the control, it remains the same with four females and one male throughout the whole time. Okay. At day 35, this is over here, Okay, the growth of fish in each experimental group was compared to its control group. Because remember at the very beginning it said that if the the male was gone, that the largest female then would go through a period of growth and would become male. Okay, this was compared to the control group. This was used to calculate a standardised value that took into account growth in the control group. The figure shows the mean standardised growth values for the experimental treatments so experimental groups in treatment one and treatment two. Error bars represent standard error of the mean. Fair enough, it's a nice enough graph. Okay, suggest why it was necessary to have separate control groups for treatments one and two. In, in some ways, I think this is very obvious. I mean, basically, you can't have a control that is not correct for the experiment that you're setting up. So you can't have a different control group for the experimental group. So if you're looking at treatment two, the experimental group is four females, one male. So I can't use the same control group that I had for experiment one or treatment one because I had two females and one male. So your control has to be the same as your experimental for you to draw a valid comparison. And then on top of that, although this one, it looks like 
these are not far away, they're not perfectly the same. I mean, they've got overlaps in the errors, so you could argue that there's no statistical difference, but it, it could be that there's still a difference in the control with the two different setups. Okay, so um, they might have increased or decreased growth by different amounts. So, yeah, so it's, it's all of that that you have to recognise and clearly state. Okay, give one conclusion that could be drawn about the effect of treatment 2 on the growth of sex changing females compared to treatment 1. So you're just looking at this graph over here. It is pretty clear. Um, treatment 2 compared to treatment 1 and we're looking at the growth of the sex changing females. So let's just take this off in terms of that's where the kind of difference can definitely be taken to. Put in our kind of error in there as well. Um, there is absolutely no question that in treatment 2 there is a greater increase than in treatment 1. I'm not entirely sure why they gave you three lines, to be honest, because that's really all you're having to say. Treatment 2 gives you more growth than treatment 1, making sure that you're very carefully stating treatment 1, treatment 2. Okay, uh, last question on this. Suggest an advantage of greater size in sex-changed females. Okay, so it tells you... Um, up the top here. Uh, each female defends a territory and then it says dependent on the population density of the species a single male may defend a group of up to 10 neighbouring females. So if that male is having to defend then that's what you're looking for for greater size. Greater size means that they're going to be able to defend greater territories or defend them better and if it comes down to a normal set up for what you're expecting with female choice, then male-male rivalry is also in there as well. Okay, um, that's it, and that's the paper.